all of you, and especially thanks Akasha and the whole team for inviting me also for giving this talk here. Greetings to you all. Here we'll be talking about the design of method for fractures of the proximal and distal tumors. Uh, first of all, I would like to tell a few things that after seeing these slides, please don't go straight away and start out with upper limb. This for completion sake is asked me to include this. Of course, you can do initially start with tibia and then you can come upward or you can use the you can go for the upper limb. Fractures of the proximal humerus are common and debilitating injuries. It's one of the most common osteoporotic fractures that we come across. Proximal humerus fractures account for 2 to 4% of the upper extremity fracture and 5% of all fractures seen in the emergency department. There is a universal agreement that most of the proximal humerus fractures need not be operated, especially the ones which occur in elderly. But of course, in the younger age group, when it's badly communicated, you need to operate and fix it. Non-operators. Two conditions to assess the stability, as we all know. The displacement angulation is less, and if the whole humeral shaft and the head moves as one unit, it need not have to operate. It's a stable thing. There are a wide range of treatment options, as we all know. Especially these days, every fracture, every proximal fracture is operated and fixed. For the last 10 years, there has been a considerable increase in the number of reconstructs and the implants used for these injuries. As we all know, there are various types of fixation. Plans are also suture fixation, perfect in his intramedullary nail, plating, and of course, lastly, only in this as the saying goes in orthopedics and trauma, there are different ways to build the cat. This photograph I had taken during the pre-digital era, when it was a regular SLR camera, this was a photograph in Russia, girls, they dye their hair in different colors. So it's up to us to decide which implant to use, what to use, it all depends on your familiarity with that system. But we follow the same principles as in Russian Lizaro Center. Again, my sincere thanks and gratitude to all my teachers here and in this center. <coughs> Important aspect of Bilizaro method. As, it's, as you all know, it's a closed method. As far as possible, we don't try to open the practice center. So it's very important that we don't, when a patient comes to the practice, it's almost important not to trouble it or not to disturb it any further. For instance, when we take and sometimes we have seen like X-rays with AP view and axial view, the limb affected and the fracture view. <coughs> This can further displace the fracture and can cause harm. So we, as far as possible, don't harm or disturb. Radial evaluation is very important. The normal AP view is taken with cassette, the radial cassette depth of the scapular plane and the beam directed from anterior at the normal AP. And the axial view, or in fact, you take an oblique view. Oblique view is the same, the cassette is kept the same way, but the beam is stopped from straight. It's directly tilted in a 45 degree angle. Axial view is not taken, it's only taken in half of the axial view. Elizaro fixation is a minimally invasive technique. We give distal humerus fraction on a fracture field. Distal humerus fraction is applied and a close manipulation of the fracture site is done and we put this marker wires and take an x-ray. And for if it's a distal humerus fracture, the olecranon wire is passed and olecranon traction is applied and try to reduce it close and of course the x-rays are taken. This is how the x-rays look with the marker wire. One reason why we take this portable x-ray is we get the long view, a long axis of the if the whole bone as such instead of a short area. <coughs> this is how it looks with the we always follow the Russian method as I said it's a progressive construct. For instance after the traction wires are passed this way and then we mount the rings one by one. And uh, I basically follow this book for well, safe particles or wire insertion. I have something to tell you.
imaginary line is drawn from point 2 to the center here in the anterior plate. In the imaginary line, we can use a marker even. This is the lateral epicondyle, this is the medial epicondyle, and this is the pulsation of the artery. The line is drawn from point here to the medial side and from the posterior leaf on the tip from here to the lateral epicondyle that drains drawn. So, these, this area, like as we see in this picture, this is how the vessels go. So, anterior to posterior, this much is kind of safe. And then when it comes distally, here, here again, this is a safe area. And distally from medial to lateral, you can pass wide. This is kind of safe. Again, almost the same picture. This is where we would pass wires. And here, we can pass from anterior lateral to posterior medial. Yeah. And similarly here too, but here it can be passed from lateral to medial or vice versa. In the anterior view, this is kind of a safe corridor. In the posterior, this is how it looks. Before we start, I think the post-operative care is very, very important in this uh, I have quoted this from Dr. Mangal Pariya. In conventional orthopedic surgery, the manipulation of the bone and the tissue is done during the surgery as such. But in, in, uh, in Elizaro method, like we do very minimal trauma of in tissue or uh, bone. Uh, we don't manipulate any, any, anything much, but we, most of the manipulation factor happens after the surgery, after 3 to 4 points in bone transport or whatever. So, so that shows how important it is to take care of the spins and take the post operative care. Once you are dedicated with the post operative care, I think most of the results will be successful. Some cases, proximal humerus, a 68 year old nurse sister, patient with a brain. The proximal head, we, we pass two or three body wires for stability. And two wires here, and initially also we pass wires. Her X rays and her function after removal of the brain. Another elderly patient, patient with a brain, and his X rays, and this was soon after removal of the brain. This is a fracture dislocation which came to us a little late. Of course, we had to open for it, getting the dislocation reduced. And his x rays. This is another lady who again came a little late. Back to dislocation. Her x rays. And her punch. 53 year old male, badly comminuted fracture. and his function. Of course, when it comes to distal humerus fractures, fractures of the distal remains a challenging problem despite advances in techniques and implants. Distal humerus fracture accounts for approximately 2% of all fractures. Uh, we know there is a wide range of options. Unlike proximal humerus fractures, most of the distal humerus must be treated properly. In way back in 1937, Eastwood stated a perfect anatomical protection is not necessary in order to obtain good results. The bag of modern leather is elderly still fall over. Some cases again, is an 82 year old sister, badly osteoporotic. Her x rays and her function. 49 year old male patient with this kind of a fracture. This was done close, we didn't open it. Initially, we immobilized an elbow for some time and then removed that frame. Patient and his extra. 33 year old male patient. Body 
and interaction was applied close stretch and tried and we got those fragments with this holy voice.
Now one word of caution, you have seen multiple results. You all seen results with pillows and how the patient moves his shoulder. You have seen dual and dual paintings of the elbow and see how the elbow is stiff. Compared to that, this looks miraculous. But this three day conference is not enough for you to go and start applying numeral frame. So numeral frame to reserve. Both femur and humerus don't do it now. Start with tibia and wrist, which are simple and safe areas, simple wires to pass. I know you are all very impatient to go home and start doing it, trying it in one case. So be selective in the case. Now this finishes the elisera part, but in continuation, because we are doing elbow, supracondal fractures in children is the commonest fracture we all see. Every one of us sees large number of fractures and then taking to the theatre and struggling and then passing care wires and then ending up with stiff elbows. Dr. Divakar has an experience of over 10 to 15,000 supracondal elbows. All treated conservatively over the last 30 40 years, where it doesn't even use a pin. He has a very light featherweight plaster technique, and in three weeks, the child is back normal. In 10 days, the patient is pain free. It's really miraculous. Uh, when he initially posted it, uh, described it, people didn't believe it. He posted it on Facebook, it drew a lot of flack. People criticized him, people called him mad, they called it silly, they called it stupid. But then I saw the magic, and I realized it's really wonderful. And like which is natural and physiological. This method is just simple conservatism. It's a method of actual manipulative reduction of a uh, supraconda fracture which gets hairline accurate reduction every time. So not only is he going to give a short talk, he is also going to demonstrate how to make an ultralight plaster. Plastering is a lost art. Many of us are not taught how to put plaster in the medical college. So we must know how to do a good nice plaster. The next 20 minutes will be that. After which we go back to the workshop table. Don't touch the rubber models and silicone models, they are for deformities, they will come tomorrow. So evening workshop is again one and a half two hours, you will have the same faculty who will be with the first half an hour and then they will go back to the hotel rooms to get changed and get ready for the banquet. In this workshop you will dismantle whatever you have done in the morning, assemble a prefabricated frame in with all the rings and rods which you have there. It will have four rings. You then pass it over the bone and fix the bone to the stand. And this prefab frame ensures that it stands in the middle, the bone stands in the middle of it and wires are passed at right angles. One wire will pass on this end of the ring, one wire passes at that end of the ring and all wires are tangent. So at the end of the day, all 15 tables will have one one model each of a finished prefab assembly done by the team and Dr. Kirpak will inspect them in the morning and whichever table has the best made frame we will give a special certificate to those 12 participants of that particular frame. So they will tell who has understood the principles. So our teachers will not teach you in the second half. You have to make, they will come to the table, see, show your products and tell you to make a prefab assembly. Make you started and they leave. For the next one and a half hours you are going to do the workshop on your own. And end of the day you are going to finish each table. Plain papers will be left on the table. You are going to write the name of all the members who joined together to make that particular frame in all the 15 tables. We will do the inspection part in the morning while before we do the deformity thing. The banquet after this is in Jimkana Club, which will start at about 7, 7.30. So from here, Jimkana Club is only 20 minutes by auto, half an hour by auto or 20 minutes by cab. You can all come there and join us with the thing. Now I invite Dr. Arvind Divakar Jain to come and speak on his method, Divakar's gravity method for reduction of supraconductor factors.